All right, ladies and gentlemen, XAI just dropped a bombshell by announcing their new chatbot, Grok2. Now, folks, Grok2 isn't just any chatbot because it recently revealed that it's actually the model known as Suscolumn R. And this is huge because up until now, many speculated that Suscolumn R was actually Strawberry, an advanced reasoning model from OpenAI. The speculation was fueled by the fact that Suscolumn R was grouped with OpenAI's chatbots in the chatbot arena, leading many to believe it was one of their cutting-edge creations. But now we got the confirmation that this model is in fact from XAI. Elon Musk himself confirmed this with a tweet saying RRRR sus, which blew up with 38.7 million views. It feels less like a surprise and more like Musk saying, I told you so. Now, when you look at the leaderboard in the chatbot arena, sus column R has performed impressively well. But to be fair, the leaderboard isn't always the full story. Sometimes the models don't have the right context length or the queries aren't quite on point. However, it seems that it has consistently shown itself to be state of the art. Remember in a recent video, we put this model head to head with some of the other leading models out there. And at the time I mentioned that while it was up there with state of the art, it didn't exactly blow me away. However, folks, what really stood out was how this model approached problem solving because it seemed to reason through questions and queries in a way that other chatbots just simply didn't. Now, what's fascinating is that Grok2 seems to outperform Claw 3.5 Sonnet. Yep, you heard that right. However, we don't have full access to Grok2 yet since it's still being rolled out, but from what we can see, it not only beats Claw 3.5 Sonnet, but also tops Gemini 1.5 Pro and Meta's Llama 3.1. That said, I take that with a grain of salt because from what I've gathered, Claude 3.5 Sonnet is still the best in terms of raw intelligence, especially when tackling the toughest challenges. It's important to remember that the LMSYAS Arena Leadership Board doesn't just measure intelligence. It also looks at how well a chatbot forms its responses and how helpful those responses are compared to others. So while the leaderboard is a useful tool, folks, it doesn't tell the whole story when deciding which model to use. Then, recently, they released their overall ELOs for the chatbot arena. Now, I know having to tilt your head to read it isn't ideal, but that's beside the point because what's really impressive here is how XAI has made such a strong entrance into the AI game, despite being a smaller player without the massive resources of giants like Meta, Google, or OpenAI. I mean, many people underestimate them, but they've certainly proven their capability. Then folks, what's pretty crazy is that Grok2 feels like it's on the same level as GPT-4. Later in this video, I'll show you a demo of some of the impressive things this chatbot can do. Now, looking at Grok2's performance in the chatbot arena, it outperforms almost every model except Gemini 1.5 Pro, which is still in its experimental phase. And it's interesting because opinions on Gemini 1.5 Pro are kind of split at the moment. Some people like myself find it pretty awesome, while others are, well, less impressed. And this brings me to an important point. Different large language models have their own arenas of expertise, and which one works best depends on your specific use case. For some queries, it might be worth testing all the models to see which one excels in your particular use case. But uh, you know, there isn't a single model that's perfect for everyone and everything. Claw 3.5 Sonnet, for instance, is known for raw intelligence, while Gemini is more creative, and GPT-4 is structured and reliable. Some benchmarks even suggest that lesser-known models like Mr. Large and Llama 3.1 45B handle many low-level tasks efficiently and can potentially save you costs by not relying solely on top-tier models like Claude or Grok2, which is pretty cool if you ask me. I mean, basically, rather than routing all your queries through the most advanced models, you could reserve them for the most challenging tasks and use other models for simpler ones. Anyway, the benchmarks, which have been a topic of discussion for a while, show significant improvements from Grok 1.5 to Grok 2, because there's a notable jump across various metrics, such as a 15% increase in GPQA, 67% on MMLU, and up to 26% on the math benchmark. Initial impressions show that Grok 2 has made substantial progress compared to its predecessors because it ranks well against its counterparts. But, you know, for XAI, this is remarkable given their late start and limited resources compared to industry giants. But while it might not be the absolute top in every benchmark, Grok 2 is certainly on par with the best, and it seems to perform exceptionally well. 
Then one thing that sets Grok2 apart is its unique features like its advanced image processing capabilities because this model can analyze an image and fully understand what's happening, which is something most people might overlook but is a clear sign of its growing sophistication. If you're on X, formerly known as Twitter, and I know not everyone uses it, this might be a good reason to check it out. I guess Elon Musk is clearly pushing it to get more people on his platform, and honestly, if he spent billions on a social media site, you'd probably be doing the same thing. So if you want to use Grok2 or Grok2 Mini, the smaller, lighter version of the model, you'll need to sign up on X.com, folks. Just a heads up though, you might not get instant access right away because it could take some time to get verified and gain access to the model. But Grok2 Mini is now available and what's really interesting about it is its unique reasoning capabilities because somehow it handles tasks that other models struggle with, which is pretty impressive. Then it also features both text and vision understanding and integrates real-time information from the X platform. But here's something that's pretty crazy, because thanks to a collaboration with Black Forest Labs, the company behind the Flux One model, known for its prompt adherence, policy, and photorealism, which I talked about in a recent video, Flux is now natively built into Grok's capabilities on Twitter. So if you're looking to use Flux and aren't sure how, being on Twitter is one of the easiest ways to access it. Now let's talk about some Grok 2 Mini's cool skills and capabilities. So folks, if you're unfamiliar with AIs, some of the tests might seem a little bit odd, but they're pretty telling all the same. For instance, large language models typically struggle with counting the number of letters due to the way they tokenize text. Unlike humans, who see words as made up of individual letters, these models break words into tokens, which don't necessarily correspond to single letters. For example, the word letter might be tokenized as let and so when the model tries to count the letters, it can get it wrong, but Grok2 Mini somehow handles this task differently because it seems faster and more intuitive. Interestingly, it doesn't seem to use a step-by-step -step prompting approach like other models because typically with something like ChatGPT 4.0, if you ask how many L's are in Lollapalooza, it might initially get it wrong because you'd have to prompt it to write out each letter verify if it's an L, and then count them. But Grok2 Mini seems to bypass that complexity and provides a more accurate response right off the bat. And another interesting thing that Grok2 Mini does is that it seems to have the capability built into it. I guess the reason it might not appear to do step-by-step -step calculations is that it's a fast and lightweight model, meaning it could be processing those steps almost instantly. And this might suggest that Grok2 Mini might have an internal chain of thought or a built-in prompting strategy before it generates its final output. If that's the case, it would make this model smarter than others of its size because typically when models can do this kind of processing, they produce better responses. But I wouldn't be surprised if Grok2 Mini has a sophisticated system prompt that instructs it to think carefully through its answers before responding, and I really think it'll be interesting to see if anyone on Twitter tries to crack this system prompt over time. If it ever gets revealed, it'll be pretty insightful to understand how the model achieves such high accuracy, especially in challenging scenarios. Now folks, as promised at the beginning of the video, let's see what Grok2 can do. Something that's pretty noteworthy is Grok2 Mini's image generation capability. For example, you could ask it to create an image of London, and the result is remarkably photorealistic, almost like a real photo rather than something AI-generated, which is both strange and a little uncanny. I mean, look at this picture, folks, and this is just the Mini version. Think about what the final version of Grok2 will be capable of if the Mini version is already being this effective. Now, the revelation of Sus Column R caught many off guard. It turns out that the information we were getting from the Twitter account might not have been uh, entirely accurate, which leaves us wondering why Sam Altman responded to the tweet. Some mysteries may remain unresolved, but what we do know is that Sus Column R is a product of XAI, and it's a very, very capable model. That said, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more tests or try the model yourself, leave a comment down below. See you in the next one, folks. You all take care.